So another consideration in reacting to an incident is when and how to institute business continuity and disaster recovery plans. Now, what's the difference between the two of those? Often they're grouped together, but they're not actually the same thing. A business continuity plan, or BCP, is about keeping things running in the short term, whereas a disaster recovery plan, or DRP, is about recovering assets and resources within a reasonable amount of time after an incident takes place, and it's often IT-centric. Now, typically, as you might imagine, these are needed with little to no warning. These plans obviously need to be prepared well in advance because if you're preparing them when they're actually needed, it's really not gonna be a lot of fun. And being unprepared for something like this, no exaggeration, can destroy a business completely. Now you start the ball rolling in this process with something called a business impact analysis, or BIA. A BIA determines what needs to be recovered and how quickly. So in effect, what it does is identify the processes or functions performed by each business unit within your organization. And with respect to each function, you will look at the financial risk of not performing that function, the regulatory risk of not performing that function, and the customer or reputational risk of not performing that function. In plain English, what needs to be back up and running in what time frame to minimize the impact on the business? So a few considerations here. One. What will the impact be if a given process or function isn't restored right away? In other words, what does the business need day to day and what can wait? Two, how soon until the impact will be felt? Three, how significant will the impact be? Perhaps a good example of this might be a bank. It's probably not quite as critical to get your marketing department up and running as it is to get payment processing going. Now, this is not to say that marketing is unimportant. Of course, the bank's not going to work without that long term. But short term, payment processing is basically the lifeblood of a financial institution. Of course, that needs to be up and running as quickly as possible. Now, overall, a BIA is a pretty slow and involved process because you're literally going business unit by business unit and breaking down, yes, we need to be back on board by this or by that. It's not a lot of fun. It's totally worth doing correctly because later on, if you actually need this resource, you'll be thanking your lucky stars you have it. And one nice thing about this is it's really not an unusual thing to do. There are numerous resources and even step-by-step -step resources available online and elsewhere. Now, we spoke a bit about a business continuity plan. So what is it beyond, okay, it's for sooner stuff? It's basically a plan to maintain or rapidly restore business functions in the event of a, quote, major disruption. Now, basically what it does is it ensures critical business functions continue during a crisis, and it will outline the immediate steps taken in response. Specific steps will obviously depend quite a bit upon the specific circumstances and the nature of your organization and your environment. Now, this will cover business processes, your people, your actual assets, how you deal with your business partners, and a host of other issues that obviously will vary from organization to organization. For example, how will your employees communicate and where will they go and how will they continue working? For example, I believe I mentioned a bit earlier the idea of, let's say the police come to your office one day and say, hey, uh, we've got a problem next door, there's a gas leak, so we need to evacuate your building. So, okay, you have no notice, you basically get up and you leave. How does your business keep running? Everything's physically still in the building, you're not there, how do you keep going in a short-term sense? This is what a business continuity plan is for. Now, again, it's going to vary quite a bit depending on the nature of your business, what happens, where you're going. This is one reason you need to have one of these prepared because there are a lot of eventualities you need to be ready for. And one thing that's really helpful here is this is not an unusual or arcane type of thing. There are plenty of free templates available online and elsewhere. Or what you can do is you can start with a BCP used by another organization that's somewhat similar to yours and modify it because a lot of these things are published online and you can see, okay, company X who sort of does what we do, well, they, this is how they handle it. Maybe we can do something similar. There's nothing wrong with that approach. Now compare that with a disaster recovery plan. What's one of those? This one covers steps needed to recover and replace infrastructure and related items within a reasonable amount of time after a disruptive event. And of course, reasonable may depend quite a bit on how critical the system in question happens to be. It should also contemplate various levels of disasters. So this may literally be a single system or even a single device if it's valuable enough. Maybe data centers or even entire sites. You need to be ready for different levels of problems. 
Now, of course, in practice, what this basically means is that the organization's environment should be examined to determine the impact of any single system or device failure, and then you move on from there. Basically, the BIA and risk assessment should give you some guidance with respect to specific systems, functions, and processes. The DRP specifies what must be done to continue operations without the affected system. The DRP should include the how of getting replacement equipment if it's needed. And it must be prepared in conjunction with an organization's operational departments so that each will understand what the other departments will cover as well as its own responsibilities in case the plan is actually needed. Basically, everyone needs to know where their place is to make sure everything's moving in the same direction as quickly as possible. If everyone thinks they're doing the same thing or no one's handling, you know, requirement X, of course you're going to run into a problem down the road. So everybody's roles need to be laid out clearly. One consideration for a larger scale disaster is something called a hot site. A hot site is literally sort of a, a plan B. If you're a fan of Star Trek, it's the battle bridge. Basically something happens to the bridge, the bridge is destroyed, they can't operate the ship, they go to the hot site, the battle bridge, and they can still operate it and keep moving. This is basically a plan B that's full scale. And as you might imagine, these can get quite expensive to maintain. There are cloud-hosted services which can be less expensive, but of course, you have to consider that pretty carefully in terms of security concerns and privacy concerns. Now, testing is also a very big issue with this. Given what's at stake, a disaster recovery plan should be tested and kept up to date, though testing, as you can imagine, can be both expensive and quite disruptive. But it's rare that the first draft of a disaster recovery plan is actually perfect, so it's extremely risky to make the first run through a live one. Now, there are some relevant standards here which can certainly help. Um, from ISO, you have ISO 27031, which is IT systems disaster recovery, and also from the 24000 series, there's 24762, which is just straight disaster recovery. And much like the BCP, the DRP, is a pretty well-known animal, so that's a great advantage in that there are tons and tons of resources available. There's plenty online, there's plenty offline. If anything, it's more like getting through the thicket of it to find the information you need. So certainly there's no shortage of this, and that's excellent actually, because this is both of these are really critical plans to have in place to keep your organization safe and secure.